Well, hello everyone. Now I should be doing this intro from out there, but or out there, but it's so windy and it's so cold. You probably wouldn't hear me, and uh, my teeth would probably be chattering anyway. So I thought I'd do it in here in the warm. So today I'm down in Suffolk, stroke Essex, and I've come down here to do some long exposures. There's some really good subjects down here. Uh, I've been wanting to come down here for quite a while now. Um, even though these subjects aren't anything original, you've probably seen these. Uh, locations and sh shots before um, it's something I've always wanted to do it's something I've wanted to capture myself so I thought I'd come down here for a few days and just do long exposures so this was meant to be a guide to shooting long exposures to show you how to get the technique down to a fine art though of course the end result definitely won't be fine art it's just a photograph just like everything else is however this trip's not really going to plan so far and this is what happened yesterday so I headed round the coast to Essex to a place called OC, or is it Osea? Not sure. I think I mispronounced one of my later locations, so not to worry. Uh, so yeah, there's these uh, beach huts here, and um, this is what I wanted to photograph. These were going to be my long exposure subject. As you can see, I, I arrived at low tide, had plenty of time, uh, never been here before, so I wanted to survey the surroundings to, to check how this would work out. So there's a line of huts, Nice colour, it's not necessarily going to go for a colour shot, but uh, nice and uniform, make a great simple subject looking out to out into the estuary here. So these are going to be my subject. So the idea was to capture these at high tide when the water should uh, come around halfway up the steps. That's what I was hoping or that's what I've seen the shots done before of. Whether I'd get such a high tide at this time of year, I didn't really know, but I wanted it to cover the boardwalks there, at least some of the steps. So it's, it's just the legs of the uh, beach huts that are standing in the water it would separate them um, from, the, from the land there. Well, as I was waiting, I thought I'd check my favorite uh, tide app, which is iTides for OC Island, see when the high tide was. So I was there at 10 o'clock and the high tide wouldn't be until at least 12. So I had plenty of time, but would five meters be high enough to cover the steps as I wanted? But you can see this tide starting to come in now, starting to cover up. I'm gonna go over that boardwalk, hopefully up to the steps as well. But the height of the tide wasn't my only problem here. As you can see, I'm looking over to, the, uh, to my left and the sun is starting to break through. So when I do this shot, I'm gonna be looking into the bright sun. Over to my right, I've got cloud coming in, which is good, but will it arrive in time to block out the sun? Unfortunately, what I found out was that was a rain cloud. So yes, I had strong winds, rain, and a dog barking in the background too. Not a good combination. And as you can see, that cloud is starting to drift over and there's a blank patch and I'm getting bright sun from one side, rain from the other, and I'm not even getting the high tide that I wanted. Total nightmare, wasn't gonna get the shot. So instead, I thought I'd try this app that I recently downloaded called Spectre, which does long exposures on the phone. A miracle as it may seem, it will let you do a nine second exposure by hand holding the phone bit of uh, software wizardry going on but the results are pretty good so these were going to be my long exposures from this location I quite like the results actually so that was yesterday and today I'm in Felixstowe and I've come over here early I've come here waiting for the high tide but it's sunny conditions and because the view is looking east I'm looking directly into the sun at the moment so I wanted cloud for the long exposure and I wanted cloud to block that sun. I've got no cloud. So I really don't know if this shot's gonna to work today. Obviously I can blur the water, but I really wanted some nice cloud to streak as well. My other problem I was trying to do today was trying to get two locations in one day in a high tide. And as they're not next to each other, it was gonna be tricky. So I was gonna get this shot as the tide was coming in for high tide, and then move around to the coast as quick as I could to get another shot, another subject, as the tide was slowly going out, but still at high tide. I'd only have an hour or two for the peak high tide 
to get the two shots so it was a bit hit or miss whether I'd get to both locations but that was the idea. Now if you've seen any of my other videos where I've shot long exposures with my Olympus cameras you'll know that I use the Olympus EP5 for this technique uh, just because it gives a cleaner result, less noise in the image. Now I have got my EM1 Mark II with me as well and that's not too bad at doing long exposures actually but uh, I've got into the workflow of having the noise reduction permanently switched on on that camera just to guarantee me a nice clean result. However because I'm working to a high tide here it's a subject I can't take my time with as such. I've got two locations to get to. Uh, I'm working my EP5 just to cut down my workflow and shooting time so I can get between those two places. I'm not having to hang around for that dark slide to take a two or four minute exposure after I've done my exposure to get that clean result. So the EP5 allows me to work a bit faster. So I'm going to give it another hour, wait for the tide to come in and I'll go out with my EP5 set up get this break water, film as much as I can, and let it be rushing around the coast to get the next shot, and that's it. That'll be done for the day. A two hour shoot out the whole day, and that's with clear blue skies. Well, as you can probably see from this silhouetted shot here, that the problem I've got here, I'm looking almost into the sun. I needed cloud to block out that sun to do this long exposure. I had to time it carefully for this time of the year, um, this time of the day for the high tide. Now, obviously, if the sun is in the east at the moment, it sets in the west. So perhaps I could have done an afternoon shot when the tide was high, but that wasn't this time of the year or this time of the month. I'd have to wait a bit longer. That's the only way to get over this. But if I'd had a cloudy day, it would have blocked out the sun and I could have got this shot with the high tide in these hours. So there's nothing much I can do. Um, I can't wait for any cloud to build up because it'd be too late. I can't wait for later on this afternoon because it won't be a high tide. And if I timed it differently so that it was a high tide when the sun was over in the west and I wasn't looking into the sun, I wouldn't be shooting today. Well, in order to get a shot here, at least one shot, and not walk away empty-handed, I've compromised a bit. So instead of the wide view of this, uh, this breakwater that I wanted, where I'd be looking into the sun, I've gone for half of it in my shot. So I've gone for the view as it, as it bends round to the right, to that post. So I'm looking away from the sun a bit more. I've still got the sun right over to my left. But by cutting it in half and just going for a square crop, going for a tighter shot there I think I've just managed to get a shot where the sun isn't being influenced too much the water is blurred for the long exposure and the sky is just blank as it would be if I had um, a cloudy sky that I'd have blurred if there wasn't too much streaking it would come out just a very blank neutral backdrop and that's what I want it's just the subject is the main feature here and everything is just blurred around it to give that simplicity which is exactly what I'm after on these long exposure shots it's a simplicity you don't want anything complicated you want a minimal subject for a minimal composition and a minimal result but just because I'm applying a technique that slows down time and creates an end result of minimalism I don't think rewards that image to be classed as being fine art it is just a photograph in the end anyway it's a dash over to the next location See if I have any more luck over there. Well, 50 minutes away. I'm going to have to be quick. Now, if you were ever under any illusion that I was pretty slick at doing these videos, then let me put that right. So this is me talking to camera, trying to be really professional, and I haven't even switched my audio recorder and mic on. So I'm blabbering away, saying all this useful stuff about the location and setting up the camera for long exposures, and there's no sound being recorded. 
you carry on Craig, you chat away, nothing's being recorded mate, idiot. Okay, let's try that again. So we've made it, made it to the next location and this is Dover Court uh, Lighthouse near Harwich. So um, we've got a little bit more cloud in the sky which is good and the sun's off to my side now rather than looking directly into the sun. So all good and we've still got a high tide. A little less windy, a little bit windy here where I'm talking to you but it is a little less windy overall. So again this is going to be a shot about simplicity. It's a single structure in the water and uh, I'm just going to blur the water around it and any uh, cloud in the sky. I've just done one shot over there by the roadside where I was looking straight out to it because it's got four legs but from that angle you only see two of the legs so I thought I'd do a shot of it like that see how that looks um, but I couldn't go wide enough really to what I wanted because there's a little bit of a jetty uh, that comes into the water there and if you go too wide you get that in the shot so I was limited to how wide I could go with the shot. Over here I've got no obstruction so I go a little bit wider but I'm still using a telephoto lens to get this um, subject because it's quite far out into the sea. So let me just talk you through the little bit of process that I go through to do long exposures. So first of all I'm going to do one single uh, standard shot just as I would if I was shooting this normally in aperture priority. Um, I've got the camera on f8 aperture and I've got the camera on its lowest ISO setting which is 100. Um, my EM1 Mark II goes down to 64 but this one only goes down to 100 and that's going to make a difference to the exposure I get when I put the filter on which I'll tell you about in a minute. So I'm just going to do a standard shot and see what the uh, result in exposure is. And so that's 2 50th of a second. F8, ISO 100, that's 2 50th of a second. So I'm going to be using the 15 stop super stopper today and there's reasons why I'm going for that filter. First of all because it's a sunny day, it's bright conditions so I need a stronger filter to get the exposure times that I want in for this shot. The other reasons is a lot to do because I'm using an Olympus camera. So as I say I'm using um, ISO 100 and that's the lowest this camera goes to. On my old Canon 5D camera and lots of different cameras the ISO goes down to around 50 and as I say my EM1 Mark II goes down to 64. As this only goes to 100 I've lost one stop already so that's why I need a stronger filter. The other reason is because I only want to go to f8, f11 at the maximum when using the Olympus cameras because you get diffraction kicking in so the image will go soft so I can't use the f22 apertures that I could have got away with my Canon so that's another two to three stops that I've lost there. Add that to the one from the ISO and I've lost four stops of available light with the filter in place before I even started. So whereas I could have got away with a 10 stopper on my um, Canon system I have to go to the 15 stop filter super stopper to allow for those lost stops of light that I don't get using this camera without the filter. So this is just a case of checking the app so I know what filter I'm using and I know the shutter speed I've got uh, without the filter in place which is 1 2 50th. Put those into the app we can use the chart you get with the filter and that tells me it's going to be a two minute exposure. Simple as that. So with everything framed up and I've focused manually before I put the filter in place so that's locked off. So I can put the filter in place. I put the camera in manual mode or bulb mode as it would be. So on this camera it has two bulb modes, it has live bulb and live time. Um, basically the same, the only difference is that live time means you just press the button on the shutter to fire the shutter and then press it again to end it. You don't have to hold it down or anything, that's the only difference. Of course the other thing with this camera, the live bit of the bulb, the live bulb, means that you see a live picture building up as the exposure is, uh, is cooking. So every 10 seconds or so the uh, the exposure shows up on the screen with a histogram to show you how far and how much the exposure is burnt in and then you can work out the exposure from that. You don't have to know it's a two minute exposure. So for example if I guessed it was a two minute exposure and perhaps the light changed that it had now and I saw that it needed a bit extra 
or it needed a little bit less. If I saw it, looked at the example that flashed up at 1 minute 50 and saw that was plenty of time, didn't need any more, I could cut the exposure off. I wouldn't have to wait till two minutes and then find out it's overexposed. Or where the sun's gone in as it has now, I did my test shot when the sun was out and it said two minutes. Now it might be two minutes 30. That's where I can do and add a bit more time. I'll be able to see that two minutes or just before that's not enough and I'll keep it running. I don't end up with a shot at two minutes and then only find out it's not enough and have to do it again. It's a great feature of the Olympus, makes these exposures and these long exposures so much easier to do. So, live time, I know it's two minute exposure, filters in place, composition set up, fire the shutter. Well this morning, similar as it may seem, I'm not at my secret location that I shot a few years ago, which as you probably know now was Dungeness Beach. Now I'm at a very similar location which is Shingle Street in Suffolk and I'm here to do some more long exposures. So I got here early, I've never been here before, to come and check out the area and I, I found this pool of water that wasn't full of water at the, uh, when I arrived because it was low tide but I guess that was the pool of water that needs to be filled at high tide to do the shots and now it's high tide it is full of water and therefore I can get the shot kind of so the idea is to get that in the foreground and then you've got these cottages surrounding the beach which you have in the background um, I was the first photographer here or the only photographer here the only person here this morning uh, low tide having to look around but now it's got to high tide another photographer has turned up and they're actually doing exactly the same shot pool of water cottages with long exposure now, unfortunately, we've both encountered the same problem here. Not only have I got clear blue skies again, which means I don't have any cloud to blur, it's just the water, which is not ideal. But because of the position of the sun and it's uh, still morning, we're getting our own shadows in the shot. So that's, again, far from ideal. But there's plenty of time. It's only just getting up to high tide now, so I've got a couple of hours to do this shot. Hopefully the sun will move round. Hopefully there's some cloud will build up, block out that sun. And I can get my ideal shot from this location. Right, well I found a position here to do the first set of cottages. There's two cottages. There's one looking over there. There's a row of four or five on there. And then there's a set of two cottages over there on the road so it's two kind of views to do from this pool so i'm doing the uh the set of four and i've got down nice and low low as i can on this uh, bit of shingle here because i want to create a shape in the foreground with the edge of this pool here now it's not only my shadow 
getting into shots is a problem, which I've avoided by moving around and doing these sets of cottages first. It's actually the contrast and the shadows on the on the shingle that's uh, causing an issue. I don't really want that. I wanted a, a flat light on here with no um, shadows created in the little dents in the shingle, but nothing much I can do about that with the sun out. Anyway, I'm set up here. I'm with my six, no, 15 stop super stopper again, purely because uh, it's a bright sunny day. So I need to get the exposure down or the exposure time down to two minutes. So I'm gonna need in a 15 stop filter to do that and keep my apertures to a mid range as I want them. So this is a shot I'm setting up. Um, I'm trying to avoid copying any other shots I've seen before. You may have seen some shots done from here. I've seen some shots. It's what attracted me to this location, but now I've found the area to do. I'm trying to find my own compositions so I don't copy other people's uh, versions. This is my own version of it, be it better or worse. So as always, I've done a test shot just without the filters in place, just to show me the composition, get the composition right, show me the uh, exposure time, so I can then work out, once I put the filter in place, what the exposure time will be um, using the app for this uh, actual filter. And that gives me exposure time for two minutes. Well, my second shot here, again, I'm keeping really low to the ground. Uh, I want to create a nice bit of foreground here with a shaping. There's more shaping with the shingle around on this side. But again, I've got my shadow right in the shot here because the sun's right behind me. Now, I may be able to solve this because I'm going to process these images really quite dark and moody. They're definitely going to be black and white. That's why I want them nice and simple. Very minimalist looking shot. But because of the way I'm going to process them, the beach will be very dark anyway so I may be able to get rid of that shadow I've got myself in the uh, post-processing. So it's just a case of getting the shot done, there's nothing I can do about the sun at the moment, I can only hang around and, and wait to get this shot before the tide goes down if the sun disappears behind some cloud but otherwise I've just got to work with what I've got. Hopefully I can get an end result that I'm happy with. Well I've got my composition set up and I've got myself definitely in, in shadow in the foreground but I'm shooting quite wide at the moment, so what I could do is stand back, move back along the shingle here, and then zoom in to get the same composition, and that'll help avoid getting my shadow in the shot. Well, it's just turned half 12 therefore it's just turned peak high tide and we've got some lovely cloud just drifted in not cloud to feature in the shot unfortunately it's not in that part of the sky but it is blocking out the sun so that means we're going to get reduced contrast less shadows on the beach and a much easier shot to do for my end results end results of course that will just be a photograph they won't be a fine art image and just because i'm doing this technique this type of photography definitely doesn't make me a fine art photographer. Well, it's been a, a challenging few days down here in Suffolk stroke Essex, what with the weather, but then again, I suppose, where would the fun be if it was all laid out on the plate for me and made very easy? No fun at all. 
Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you've learned a little bit about taking long exposures and that it's quite an easy technique to do. And perhaps you'll go out and try doing your own ones. Anyway, I'll see you on the next video.